We're in Algebra 2 at 9.8c, and we're going to talk about the maximum height of a projectile by completing the square. Now, there's 18 previous videos for Chapter 9 so far. This is the last one before we go into Chapter 10. The seven previous videos talk about maximum and minimum values, okay? So you can click on the description and watch those real quick if you get lost. Frequently, problems generate nonlinear data points that can be fit by quadratic functions. And we can combine our knowledge of quadratic functions and problem-solving techniques to solve them. A kinematic theory in physics shows that when an object is thrown or projected upward with an initial velocity, that's v sub zero, its approximate height is given by a quadratic function. So we're going to use this, and this formula is for meters. You might see a different formula for feet. The s is the actual height in meters. The h is the, the starting height in meters. The t is the seconds after the object is thrown or projected, and that v sub zero is the initial velocity. v is velocity, and that little sub zero means the beginning, the initial one at the start, okay? So let me show you my drawing real quick here. We have a rocket. It's got a burn. The burn stops, and then it's going to fall to the ground, okay? So I'll show you that again in a second. A model rocket is fired upward at the end of the burn, so when it stops burning, it has an upward velocity of 49 meters per second and is 155 miles high. So when the burn ends, it's still being projected upward, and at this point it's at 49 meters per second and it's 155 miles high. Now it's going to keep thrusting forward. We want to find its maximum height and when that happens before it falls to the ground. Okay? So... We need to find its maximum height and when it's attained. We're going to start counting time at the end of the burn. So our v sub zero, our initial velocity, is 49. It tells us that. And h is 155. We'll graph the appropriate function and begin by completing the square. So here's our formula. We plug in our values of 49 and 155, and this is what we get. We can divide our b value by this 4.9 and we're going to get this. We regroup it and divide it by that a value. Now we've got a negative 10t here. 49 divided by 4.9 is 10. Now we can complete the square. We divide this in half. We get a 5. We square it. We get a 25. We covered this in video 9.6a. We're going to add and subtract the same value because this is a zero pair additive inverse. It doesn't affect the formula at all. Okay? But we can regroup this by putting the parentheses after this plus 25 and then adding a negative 4.9 times this last negative 25. We multiply these two together and we get 122.5. When we add these two together, the 122.5 and the 155, we get 277.5. So we know our vertex or maximum height is at the point 5 and 277.5. Now there's another way of solving this that a lot of the algebra teachers are doing, and I'm going to show it to you, okay? So we've got our quadratic equation, and we're going to use t instead of x. And if we put in our 49 and our 155 here, it's going to look like this. And we can use the vertex formula, that h equals negative b divided by 2a, except we're going to do it for t, because we're going to solve it for t. So the 49 value is going to be a negative 49 for our negative b, and a is a negative 4.9, so we're going to multiply it by 2, according to this. And when we divide this, we get a 5. So 5 is going to be our t value. So we can put the 5 in everywhere that there was a t. We square this and multiply it, and we get a negative 122.5. We multiply these two together and get a 245. And when we add these two together, because that's a negative and that's a positive, we get 122.5, because that's actually half of that. We add our 155, and we get 277.5, our maximum height. And we know our t value is 5. See? So you can use this, or you could do it the way I did it, okay? With the adding and subtracting, like we did in 9.6a, all right? So we know our maximum height is 277.5 at 5 seconds, all right? So we know that when it got to the vertex of our parabola, 
that it was at 277.5 feet and when? At five seconds. We also know that the parabola opens downward because it's the our equation started with a negative 4.9 for the a value, okay? So, the vertex of the graph is the point 0.5 for x and 277.5 for y. The maximum height reached is 277.5 meters and it's attained at five seconds after the end of the burn. That's when it stopped burning, okay? Now we need to find when the rocket reaches the ground. So, here's the 155 meters, here's the vertex, and we need to find out when that rocket reaches the ground after so many seconds, okay? And I'll show you how I got that approximate amount. So we're going to set s to equal 0 and solve for t. So we've got a negative 4.9 times the square of t minus 5 plus that maximum height of 277.5, and we set it to equal 0. We want to isolate this t minus 5, so we're going to start by adding a 4.9 times the square of t minus 5 to each side of the equation, that makes that a positive. So now we have it like this, and our, instead of a negative 4.9, we have a positive. See that? We can divide each side of this equation by the 4.9, turn that into a 1. Now we've got this rational number is going to equal this square. To remove the square, that little two exponent, we just put a radical sign around this side. We can say that t minus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square of this rational number. We divide this. I used my calculator and I got this nice long decimal. When I squared it, I got a 7.525. So we've got plus or minus 7.525. We need to isolate t. So we're going to add a 5 to each side of the equation. That's going to give us t is approximately a positive 12, 5.5, 5. 5, 5 I'm sorry, 12.525, because time can't be negative. So we can't use the negative here. It's going to be a positive. And because it's approximate, that S does not equal zero meters, okay? So I'll show you. We're going to substitute this value, this 12.525, into the original formula. And we're going to square this and then multiply it by the negative 4.9. We're going to get this nice long decimal. We're going to multiply these two together and get that nice long decimal. And then we have to add the 155. When we add these two together, which is easier because that's a negative, we get 768.725. And when we add it to this negative decimal, we get 0 0.0344375. That's really close to zero, so it's reasonable. Okay? So that's how we found when the rocket reached the ground, we checked it, it's reasonable, and we see that our parabola went down and the rocket hit the ground at approximately 12.525 seconds. See that? All right, so as I said, if you're really confused, you need to go back and watch those previous videos, okay, because you might have gotten in over your head, all right? Our next video is 10.1a, and we're going to talk about the distance formula, and I have a theorem for you. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist. There's those 18 previous videos for this chapter, and the seven previous ones, immediately previous ones, are the important ones for maximum and minimum value, okay? So I hope you're having a great day. It's beautiful outside here, and I hope you're doing well. I'll see you next chapter. Bye.